we are live so good morning dear friends and respected dr ajeev sharma sir i welcome you to the today's session of uh, e certificate course in dermatology today we'll be speaking about the principles of uh, uh, therapy in uh, dermatology uh, we have dr rajiv sharma sir with us uh, he is the president elect of indian association of dermatologists venerologists and leprologists he was the president of association of Cl clinical dermatologists of india in 2021 he also received the best young dermatologist award in 2004 he has numerous publications and chapter in books and uh, he was also uh, honored as most inspiring dermatologist of india by et in 2021 so we welcome dr rajiv sharma sir and without wasting much time i request dr sharma sir to please start the presentation thank you dr ajay <clears throat> so we have had a series of lectures and i am sure most of you must have learned from all the lectures that have been taken now the crux of the matter comes to how to manage so we will be dealing with the principles here so if i can start with a question what do you find is different when you deal with children and adults because while doing our mbbs we have dealt with almost all age groups as pediatricians what do you find is difficult when you are dealing with children and when you are dealing with adults what is the real difference if anyone wants to talk uh, please raise your hand and we'll promote them to as panelists or any one of you can answer yeah dr shashi has raised the hand mm -hmm. dr shashi you are uh, as panelist now you can speak dr yeah, shashi dr. please shashi. go ahead we cannot apply principles of yes, therapy sir. as in adults because children not mini adults <laughs> they are not mini adults they have different characteristics different physiology different uh, effects of drugs and side effects of drugs so as such blanketly we can't just reduce the doses and give to children we have to be very particular about them about the mode of intake and the side effects they have become they, we don't have many studies in children of various drugs used in adults so we have to be very careful in their choice so you are talking of systemic drugs or you are talking of topical drugs any sir any all because uh, most of the systemic drugs there are no rcts done in children for most of the drugs that we are using and we do extrapolate from uh, adults to children and calculate doses basis based on weight based on body surface area isn't it true yes no no it's not and, we can use blanketly all the drugs because the in young children especially below 2 years below 6 years there are no studies of many drugs and secondly the characteristics of skin of a child and especially newborn they are very different from adults and we cannot right. use all the drugs as in adults agreed sir so the first principle is that you harm no one primum non nocere is the french word i think and it says that first of all be sure to do no harm because we don't have the right to hurt a newborn or a infant or a child because they don't have the uh, say they cannot raise their voice against what we are doing to them only the parents can do it the second principle should be that we should not overtreat we should always try to undertreat or if we are sure of our diagnosis we should always just be treating them with the only required drug not try to use the latest available drug or the super potent ones as we are often we see <clears throat> is being done nowadays by people sitting in the periphery especially the uneducated doctors they are mostly using the potent drugs for simple problems so we should use milder agents first and then step up the treatment if we don't find the adequate response of treatment is that true yes sir yes sir so, very true so right so what are the general principles that you have already enlisted that there are so many differences in the skin and there are the first difficulty that i as a dermatologist find is to get the history out regarding a skin lesion which is there many a times so we, we might should... find 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should try to choose right drug, right uh, dose, right potency yeah. for the right duration. And the right place where you can apply that drug. Because there are many yeah. drugs, we will come to that, that you cannot apply certain things on the face, in the axilla, in the groin, or on the, uh, say, behind yes. the ears or on the scrotum genitalia. So there are a lot of things that one has to go uh, learn in the real sense. But the biggest problem that I face, in fact, you might also be facing to get the right history. Because if there is pain abdomen, the mother would know. But if there is a nevi somewhere hidden, the parents may not examine till it becomes really very prominent. So to <clears throat> know the real onset when it has really started, it becomes really difficult. And patients don't come to us on the first go. As dermatologists, we are mostly seeing patients who are already treated by one drug or the other. So the morphology of the of the lesion also changes by application of certain medicines or home remedies or at times even the local traditional medicines which are being used. <clears throat> yes, sir, Dr. Shashi. Dr. Shashi, you want to say yes. something? Yes, sir. Very right. Because uh, uh, it's not uncommon to see children mm. having uh, used a combination of antifungal serum and antibody, whereas it's not required. And that changes the morphology altogether. And uh, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm really glad that you have said this. But most of the times when I see patients, they are using triple combinations or five drug combinations. And uh, I'm sorry to say that it happens almost in every city and all dermatologists are facing that problem. So, yes, you are correct and we'll move ahead. The parents may be helpful in providing us the information, but often they overlook what the real problem is. And then there is always an issue of doing investigations in small children. You are better versed with what you can do and what you cannot do. So that also one should keep in mind that what we can really investigate and what we cannot. So the difference is, uh, again, the original, the morphology and the onset and primary symptomatology, the parents may be helpful. And it is an issue. It becomes an issue even when we look at other things. Yes, you have said that you cannot use all preparations in children, especially the premature babies and the small for dead babies. And even the in the first two months to two years of age, you cannot use every drug that you use in an adult. But remember that even topical therapy when overused can cause systemic toxicity. And can you give one example of that? Any Dr. Shashi, you are active, so I will be asking you. If anyone else wants to answer, you can always be there. Can you give an example, anyone, of a drug which can cause toxicity if overused? Yeah, please go ahead. Is my PPT visible? Hello. Your PPT is visible, sir. Someone is saying that my PPT is not visible. That is why I was asking. So a common example of misuse is topical steroid, super potent ones, especially the clobetasol propionate combinations which people use in children. If applied excessively, it can even lead to Cushing's syndrome. We'll come to some more which are dangerous. Then the treatment is uh, our aim that of treatment should be to restore the normal appearance of the skin and to help the skin reach the physiological state. But remember, whenever we are using systemic drugs, the drugs that we use in children, skin is not the only target organ. There are many other organs which may be involved by the, which may be affected by the drug that we are intending to use, targeting only the skin. So this we should always keep in mind. Because we know that when we administer a drug systematically, it will reach every part of the body and it may be excreted through that part, it may be absorbed by that part and it may stay in there in that particular area of the body for a long time. 
and we should always master a drug we should remember and follow its pharmacokinetics and look for side effects at the organs where we expect they might produce but when we are applying the drug it is being applied to the target organ and most of the times we are doing it locally to the affected area only not all over the skin so in essence i would like to say that topical therapy is always the preferred therapy in small children and young adults as it delivers the medication in the right concentration at to the right tissue with the minimal possibility of toxicity if used in the right doses so to know more about this we should know about the barrier functions of the skin or the properties of the skin how they differ in children and adults you know more than me this is a basic slide where we can see that there are 12 layers of stacked cells there is a intracellular matrix and it is composed of protein lipid and water soluble substances and water so whatever we apply passes through either of these these uh, substances and then reaches the desired level in the skin so drug generally we apply on the top which is stratum corneum and it then permeates the stratum corneum to reach the lower layers of the skin of the epidermis as well as the epidermis at times it can go even deeper and this is decided primarily by the lipid water coefficients the water soluble ions that are there and the polarity of the molecule that we are using and this we have now understood that permeation through the stratum corneum which is almost a dead part of the skin is thought to occur primarily through the cell membrane for example transcellularly so from one cell to other it passes but the intracellular substance is weak or denuded epithelium is there then at times we can see them passing more down to the dermis so we can then see the difference between the skins that we have in different areas uh, so where is the thickest skin in the body which area has the thickest skin in the body palms and palms and soles palms and soles and the thinnest skin part the thinnest skin mm -hmm. the thinnest yes. skin is on the eyelids behind mm -hmm. the ears and the scrotum and also the flexural areas like the axilla and the groin the cubital and the popliteal fossa also are supposed to have thin skin in small children so the other important thing is the transepidermal water loss if you have lot of transepidermal water loss the skin becomes dry and hence the permeation of the drug through the skin may be altered so when a child is born at term the epidermis of the child is almost similar to adults and it has got excellent barrier properties compared to a infant who is born prematurely especially when born before the 30th week of gestation it has a thin stratum corneum which is poorly developed and overall the epidermis seems to be thin if you do a histology but the postnatal maturation occurs very fast and within the next 2 to 3 weeks of life the functioning of the skin in a child or a neonate becomes as good as a full term infant so we have to take precautions in the first few weeks in a child which is born before 30 weeks of gestation the children i have told and we have discussed earlier question was answered they have increased risk of systemic toxicity i have given one example and we will be discussing more so there are systems to prevent that but here you cannot use the milligram per kg body weight formula to give a drug especially because the children have different aspects of their uh, body weight body surface area etc which you know better than me so we have discussed the anatomical site where it is thick and where it is thin so what type of drug we will use we will discuss it again so these are certain variables in the therapy the drugs not only pass through the skin they pass through the appendages the appendages help in uh, transmitting or transferring some drugs down 
then it depends upon damage of the stratum corneum i have told earlier the solute or the substance in which the drug is being made the form in which the drug is being used the vehicle that we are using whether it is alcoholic whether it is uh, ether ester or it is water and the technique of application can you enlighten me on technique of application what do, what do i mean here anyone how would a technique of application make a difference see if you apply a small amount of steroid and just apply a thin layer and leave it and if you keep massaging that steroid cream or any cream into the skin the absor absorption rates would di differ and the side effects would differ plus if you apply a occlusion on any steroid cream the penetration increases but the chance of getting a side effect also increases so that you have we have to keep in mind whenever we are using a technique special technique like a red wrap technique or we are using a cling foil technique or we are using a bandage over application of a especially the topical steroids we often use uh, bandages over antibiotics and antiseptics or antibacterials which at times may not be really useful in patients of certain condition so this we have discussed that i have said that the principle should be to restore the normal look and physiological state we should prefer the topical therapy but remember there is a principle in dermatology that if the lesion is wet we have to dry it and if it is dry we have to wet it so here comes the choice if it is a oozing lesion or a wet lesion you have to use a cream if it's a dry scaly or a thickened skin lesion then you have to use a ointment lotions and gels should be used very carefully and we will again talk about it so these are the various uh, type of preparations that we keep using in dermatology practice and there are shakes or watery lotions which can be used on acutely inflamed exudative skins the only problem is that it forms clumps on drying and i think lacto the calamine lotions are one of one of them which is an example gels are to you be used mostly in the hairy areas or on areas which have got very thin skin because their potency is less as compared to the creams and the creams potency is less than that of the ointment of the same strength and the same preparation but gels are cosmetically ex acceptable but they add to the expense in a patient creams can be used in both moist and dry skin they have a cooling emollient as well as a moisturizing effect but there can be allergy to the additives that we have to make creams you have to remember this whenever you are suspecting allergy use an ointment don't use a cream gel because that can in, in fact worsen the condition ointments are basically for dry and scaly skins and it acts as an exclusive ointment being thick it occludes the surface it acts as a emollient but it is messy and it can lead to oily looking soiled clothes sprays usually are used for wide areas on eczemas where they can be drying but they are definitely more expensive foams and sprays are more expensive than any other form powders are used basically in flexures they are used to reduce friction may irritate yes dr ashwarya dr ashwarya can someone make her a panelist she wants to ask a question dr ajay dr deepika mr sushil this is some people are raising uh, their hands so let them ask cg and yes sir uh, dr ashwarya and dr gg make them panelists Yeah, go ahead please who sir dr ashwarya dr gg gg yeah and some three people raised their hands actually
So we'll take their questions as we move ahead. Set the mask. Yes. Sir. Okay. So if have they come? Uh, Doctor Ashwarya is not. Uh, yes, uh, okay. So we go ahead. So here yes. is a condition. Okay, I'll put up some clinical slides here. Let us know from someone here only. What would you like to use in this patient? The diagnosis is written there. Is there anyone to answer? Oh, we move ahead. There is another patient here. So what will be the difference between these two patients? In the first one, it's very extensive lesion. Yeah, so we will give systemic, systemic uh, antibiotic. Antibiotic. Uh, yes. What what drug would you normally prefer when you prescribe something to child of this age? We normally use cephalospor. Uh, okay, fine. Either cefatroxil or cefpodoxime or cephalosporin. Fine. Cephalexin, you mean? Oridex is cephalexin, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Fine. And in this child? Uh, topical uh, antibacterial like mupirocin or fusidic acid. Yeah. So mupirocin has a catch. So what is that catch? Uh, in cases of pus, uh, it doesn't work. That is one. Dr. Onkar raised his hand. So yeah, anyone can answer. And can sir, please moreover, raise Mr. Onkar. Dr. Pinky Gupta asked a question that in classes it was told that powder gets deposited in flexural areas, so not preferred. Yes, it depends upon the type of powder and it depends how you apply it. If you use a baby puff to apply powder, it will not get deposited. But if you use the way to press the container and then spray, yes, it will get deposited because the Indians tend to over apply the powder in plenty. So it is to be applied just as a thin layer, as we do in children. When you, in infants, when the mother applies with a powder puff, that's the right way to apply powder in children. It should not be sprinkled like we uh, are used to doing it. Okay, so here the mupirocin will come to that catch point. No problem. People are raising hands, but no problem. Now here, another patient. What will you treat with? This is a patient with bulla simpatico. You have been taught all this, I think, in the past. So this patient would require injectable antibiotics. So which it is mostly because of staph? Staph. Yeah. So we we'll have to treat right, sir. So this is a patient with ecthyme, a deeper form of infection. So topicals alone will not work. You will have to give a systemic agent along with topical, either fusidic acid preparation or a mupirocin. So here is the catch. Mupirocin, it is now recommended by many Western authorities not to be used more than 10 days at a go because the incidence of resistance is rising in the Western world. So this precaution one should take we should try to use fusidic acid more than mupirocin because this is the only drug probably we are left with where it works. And we have an intranasal cream also to apply. So we can use fusidic acid, mupirocin, metronidazole gel also we use in some conditions. Silver nitrate cream is good and povidone iodine ointment or lotion. Do you people use this preparation in children? So here are the catch that I was talking about, about certain more drugs, like isopropyl alcohol-based preparations of chlorhexidine should be avoided in premature infants because it can increase the percutaneous absorption and hence the potential for toxicity is there. Povidone iodine going to its potential toxic systemic side effects and skin necrosis. 
in neonates and very young children, it should be used selectively with a lot of caution. So yeah, I have seen most of the surgeons using it left, right, and center, but probably they are not alcohol-based iodine preparations. They are using some different base. Can you enlighten me here? So what is this? You have been taught this. This lecture must have been taken by someone. Yes, alopecia areata. No, sir. This is tinea capitis. You can see the small papular lesions here. Right. Yes, sir. Always. Alopecia areata will have clear, normal, smooth skin. It will yes. not have a bumpy skin or a rough skin or a scaly skin. So this is tinea capitis, where you can see some hairs still there, which are broken off. So this is tinea capitis. So how will you manage this? This is a patient with tinea fasciae. You can all see the lesions here, here, and here. So patient with tinea here and a mother with tinea on the abdomen. She was carrying the child in her lap. So the child has tinea on the waist and the mother too has tinea. As some more tinea patients in children, that even the nails can get involved. And this is a peculiar problem which is occurring now. Have you seen such patients? Small children coming with very small multiple lesions of tinea like these. So always remember Persian cats and cats at home. If you get multiple small lesions, on body of a child or even adults nowadays, always ask for cats at home. Because this is a different type of tinea which is caused by microspore on canis, which is uh, seen in cats and it is now becoming rampant in certain parts of uh, our country where the Persian cats are spreading like anything. So these are the topical drugs. Clotrimazole, Myconazole, Oxyconazole, Liberconazole. You, we have Cyclopiroxolamine. We have Turbinafine, Amrolfine, Statin, and Naphtifin. But in conditions like these, you always have to use a systemic antifungal agent. And we'll come to that. Topicals don't have any role to play, but they are often prescribed by us to keep the spore count low. We can also use a shampoo form of antifungal. In such lesions, you can use any of the antifungals. They all work, but nowadays amrolfine is supposed to be a better drug. So is luliconazole and uh, oxyconazole. But remember to treat the parent also if there is a child. And if you cannot always refer to a dermatologist for proper treatment, because genia is one thing which is becoming the most difficult thing to treat in dermatology nowadays. Nail always needs systemic treatment, though there are lacquers containing amrolfine available, which are supposed to be as effective as the oral medicines. And nails take longer. How fast does a nail grow? And it depends on the age of the patient and the rate of growth of the nail, because it has to grow from proximal nail fold to the tip in a normal fashion. Then only the treatment can be stopped. Okay, this you must be seeing day in and day out. So we, you must be managing these patients pretty well, but still at times it is difficult to manage because of certain reasons. And if anyone can tell me the reasons in the end, because people want question and answers only later, so that we will take later. This is some more forms of candidal intertrigo. Uh, this is a newborn, uh, only 10 days old, who presented with lesions like these. This is also a form of candidiasis, a neonatal candidiasis patient. It was not congenital, but happened later, disseminated candidiasis in the child. It is recognized by these scaly peripheral burst out lesions in the periphery of the lesion. So these are the systemic drugs that you can use in children. These are the doses are given, but they should be used with caution, with monitoring. And always, I think you should take help of a dermatologist available next door.
Now the bread and butter is scabies. These are patients with scabies, different areas being involved. <clears throat> so you may not be willing to answer the questions here, it's fine. Otherwise, this is the most tricky area of treating children and infants. It's a typical burrow on the penis, it's a pediculosis, eczematization in a patient with scabies, another eczematous lesions in scabies. So these are the drugs that we use. You all must be using them. So we'll take them up in the question answer session. We'll ask them how you apply, how many times you apply, why you apply that many times, what is the need, etc. Then comes an uh, interesting area that is most misused area is topical of uh, dermatology is use of topical steroid. These are the areas where we prefer to use topical steroids. And these are some conditions where you have to choose a uh, agent accordingly. You must have been taught this is lichen planus. This is also lichen planus. This is also lichen planus. The actinic type. These are hypertrophic lichen planus lesions. The treatment will vary. The strength of steroid will vary. The type of cream, ointment, base, whatever you want will vary in every condition. This is palm involvement in lichen planus, which is not so common. Again, the treatment pattern or things will vary. The oral lichen planus lesions again in the buccal mucosa. These are cases of psoriasis, which are best referred to a dermatologist and uh, because there the treatment is very, very difficult in children, especially because it is a recurrent disease. Extensive disease should always be sent to a dermatologist. If there is only one area involved, you may try to intervene, but dermatologist would always be a better person to treat such cases. So these are the steroids which are being used in pediatric patients. Their potencies are given here in the chart. And this is uh, the classification from in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven grades. This is the least potent one. And this is the super potent one. <clears throat> so this is called class one and this is called class seven. And these are the ones which are available with us and we use them. And this is part of question answer that I wanted to take, but we'll discuss in the end when you raise questions. But remember, it is very important to remember the one fingertip, the fingertip unit principle. It is, uh, it begins from the, this crease, interphalangeal crease to the tip of the finger and it varies in people from different races, but on an average, it is supposed to deliver about 0.5 gram. 0.5 gram of the medicine is delivered. If it is taken out from a tube, which has got a 5 mm diameter nozzle, but most of our tubes are not standardized. So we can still roughly use this rule of one FTU or fingertip unit. And one fingertip unit, if you take is 0.5 gram, two fingertip units would be about one gram. One fingertip unit can cover two palm surface areas of the body in a child or an adult also. So if you take two FTUs, then it can cover about four adult hands, including the digits, as it is mentioned here. And this is the rough amount that you have to use in different areas in children. And it varies from age, from zero to two, from two to six, from six to 10. The amount of drug to be used varies and it should be used within that uh, gram per day dose. Otherwise the side effects become rampant. So systemic steroids also we use in conditions where we cannot control with topical. We can use in pulse therapy or weekend therapy or two-day therapy. We can use in, uh, say, daily therapy, tapering it off, but we cannot taper like we taper off in bronchial asthma in five days or seven days. It has to be given for a longer period, and in some diseases, it can be, it has to be given for years together. So this is the strength that we 
think a five milligram prednisolone would be equivalent to these many milligram of uh, hydrocortisone. This is prednisolone, methyl prednisolone, four milligram, deflazacort six, triamcinolone four, and betamethasone, dexamethasone 0.75. But each of them has a different anti-inflammatory and immune suppressive property. So these are the antihistamines. Now the newer ones are being added, but still I don't know whether Bilastin is safe enough to be used in children of pediatric dermatology. But yes, people are using it. And these are the doses. Uh, probably you would be knowing better than me, but I am too scared to use them in children less than two years of age. And I would like to tell me, you all to tell me, what do you use in children who are less than six months of age? That I'll be asking a question from you. Now, these are certain side effects the, that we have when we treat uh, or over-treat children. You get Cushingoid faces like these. You can get uh, a different morphology of tinea. You can get bullous lesions in scabies and so many other problems that we keep facing when we treat children. So yes, we take the questions and I have a last slide that I have already shown. I will be asking uh, about it from you. And I think that should end my presentation. Dr. Ajay, you can take over. Thank you, sir. So if I'll anyone wants questions. to be promoted. Yeah, the questions, they can all come and ask. Uh, mm -hmm. as. Yeah. This is Tushil. Please keep on promoting to So some questions have been uh, asked. One is uh, uh, please repeat the ant systemic antifungal uh, dose, please. Dr. Pradeep Kumar has asked. Yeah, I'll I'll be doing that. I'll show that slide once again. But remember, itraconazole is still a drug which is not approved by US FDA for treating tinea patients. Even in adults, they don't recommend. Children, we are using it in India for superficial fungal infections. It is supposed to be used mostly for deep fungal infections. And fluconazole can be used in daily doses from 1 milligram to 6 milligram per kg per day. You can use even in daily doses. The duration varies from six weeks to 12 weeks, depending upon the area that is affected. Grisofalvin, terbinafine, and fluconazole are the three drugs which should be prescribed more in children less than 16 or 12 years of age. Ketoconazole should be avoided as far as possible, being a very hepatotoxic drug. Itraconazole should be reserved for patients who are not responding to these medicines. Dr. Methley, you can talk if you want to ask something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is someone asking about scabies. So, can that person come? become a panelist actually uh, we tried <laughs> to raise them trying, to the yeah. panelist level but still two people have raised their hand recently i don't know who are they uh, actually three two three two so okay sir let us uh, discuss it how do you treat scabies <clears throat> anyone who is there uh, normally how do you treat scabies Anyone, please don't be, don't tell me how do you treat resistant scabies will come only when you tell me how you treat scabies. <clears throat> so we normally use okay. uh, permethrin uh, flight below the neck. Sir, if the uh, child is less than one bath, year, bath at what then time? Then we use uh, crotometer. Uh, no, permethrin you use at bedtime? After bath, sir, we applied below the neck and let it remain there for 24 hours. No, sir. Permethrin should be used at bedtime 
it has to be applied below the chin right up to the toes and feet between the toes between the fingers under the nails no body part should be spared the whole family should be using this medicine whether they have itching or they don't have itching and one application for 8 to 10 hours is good enough a repeat should be done only if you have evidence of active disease yeah dr naresh you asked yes, this sir. question yes sir, this was my question so uh, we even if we take all these precautions apply mm -hmm. this medicine overnight after a hot water bath and drying the skin apply mm -hmm. over the body below neck so in spite mm -hmm. of sir many patients they come with the recurrence no, or, sir. or incomplete yes sir. yes i say i understand sir the itching goes after 6 weeks that's right, sir. So, what about the lesions? Think, they should go. The lesions also subside after three weeks at times. If they are, if they are long last, long standing disease, then it the lesions at places the burrows can last for long. The okay. nodules can last for up to six months also. Okay, that's nice. So that yeah. does not mean that you have to treat scabies again. Okay, is there any role of uh, applying it again after seven days? I mean, sir, there is there is role. There are studies which have shown that more than ninety five or ninety percent of the patients can be treated by one single proper application of the medicine. Okay. But yes, you can reapply, but not before ten days. Okay, ten days. And so one and, more question is, sir, yes, okay, sir, so just please, a minute. Please, please continue. Remember, please. remember that the whole family and the whole body, including the areas below the nails, should be applied, and no one should wash the hand. After the drug has been applied. Okay. Okay. That's and the nice. other part is keeping the fomites away for at least 10 days so that if there are any larvae that have hatched and have entered into the clothing, no, they should be kept away for 10 days. Okay. Okay. So the bed so sheet, the towel, the pillow cover, <clears throat> everything should be kept away. Okay. And sir, what, what is the role of oh. Protorex cream, sir? Uh, below two months? Protorex is... Yeah, it can be used, but sulfur ointments, sulfur preparations are more preferable in children less than two months. Okay. I personally don't think there is any problem in using permethrin in children less than two months also. Okay, okay. And sir, but the only thing is they should not be sucking their hands or feet, no? So you should apply something, mittens or something should be put on the hands. Okay, okay. And sir, what is the role of ivermectin below the age of uh, five years, below 15 kg? Sir, if it can be used in the uh, river blindness thing, then we can use in children, but it is not required to be used. Topical ivermectin is also useful in treating scabies. Mm -hmm. Ivermectin doses you have to repeat and 200 microgram per kg body weight you have to follow. Sir, what, what about using ivermectin in a two-year-old child? Sir, you can use, but it is not required. Okay. okay. And you will not find the proper appropriate dose form. 3, 6, and 12 is available. Hi, sir, sir, there is, ivermectin is a part of anti uh, enthalmintic drugs. Like uh, some, some drugs are having ivermectin along with... Along Albendazole. With the, yes. They sir, should not be used. That combination should never be used. Okay. Sir, sir, if we want to give um, ivermectin to a child who is two year old, can, can, can't we use that the combination? No, sir. Okay. Can you repeat it every week? Sir, we can do repeat it at least two times. I mean, uh, one. But one ivermectin nowadays we must be taking care. What can be used at what age? We have to be very careful. Okay. And a combination should always so be avoided. There are some lesions on the face. Yeah. Yes. Lesion on the face. There are some lesions, scabies lesion, scabies lesions that we notice are on the face. Then what do we should? What age group, sir? Infant, sir. Infant below one year. Many yeah. So say... I have said. Yeah. That is the that is the point I was trying to come to. Uh, that is why I wanted to discuss when I was showing the photographs. Right. See, if you have got an infant, you don't have to apply below neck. It will never work. Right. Children less than one year of age will always have face and even the scalp involved. So in them, you have to apply it from apply it from head to toe. Okay. In infants, it has to, to be applied it, they from... They do not ingest it. Yes, you have to put mittens and gloves so that they don't do this. And you have to tell the mother not to feed the child accidentally because she also has applied the medicine. So one night it is a problem. You have to do top feeding. 
So even after one year, say 13 months of age, 14 months of age, the lesions can be there on the scalp, especially when people are treating with oral steroids, injectable steroids. The scabies can go into the scalp also because margin of the scalp is often involved in small children. And crotominton, you were saying, in combination with tropical hydrocortisone or something, it works well for the remaining lesions like the nodular lesions which are there. Okay. So there are some soaps available with promethrin. Is there any role? I, I, I am not a person who will promote soaps because the contact period is so little. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Should we boil the cloths? Because we used to no, say that... No, sir. Wash that with was, warm water. That is... That is not required, sir, because you cannot kill anything by boiling, putting them in boiling water for two minutes. So you just do routine laundry after 10 days. I advise my patients to keep the clothing, the beddings and everything away in a bag for the whole family. They keep it in one bag, store it away for 10 days, then take it out, do routine laundry, dry in sun, iron it from both sides and wear it. Because in 10 days, if you if the in the, the larva or the nymph will not get keratin to eat, it will not survive and grow. Right, sir. Dr. Shrikant, you want to say something? You are allowed to talk. There was someone asking about head lice. I think yes. Dr. Deepika is also answering on the uh, chat box. Yes, sir. So, so you can repeat. answer for the head lice? So head lice, uh, same. Permethrin is the drug of choice. But melathion, if nothing works, can be used. Even See, I was talk, trying to talk about linden. The gamma benzene hexachloride preparation that all of us tend to use more. And keep applying every week or every 10 days. How actually it is to be applied? Linden. So we normally apply promethrin uh, after the head promethrin wash. Is, then... No, yeah. I was talking about scabies. Okay. Talking about scabies, linden, that GBH is also used in scabies. Benzyl benzoate is now coming back. People are saying it is a better drug and there is less chance of resistance. There are studies now published in the American Academy Journal, I think, which says that benzyl benzoate is still a better drug with less side effects. But benzyl benzoate, you have to do at least two or three applications. It single application does not work. Okay. Sir, one, one more question about croto, crotomitone cream. If we are uh, applying uh, permethrin on the skin of a child, uh, infant, uh, can we uh, just uh, choose to apply crotomitone on the face and uh, scalp? No, sir. <clears throat> no, sir. You, no, sir. No, sir. Crotomitone is not a very good anti scabiotic agent. It okay. is a good anti pruritic uh, agent. Okay. So, okay. permethrin is definitely a better drug. So, even below two months? Yeah, yes, sir. I do apply, but there are preparations with precipitated sulfur which are available. Okay. There are some preparations which are available in the market which have got 2% precipitated sulfur. So can they you... can be used as they can be used as anti scabiotic agents. Okay. So Curac, can... Curac, Curac lotion is one of them. Uh, play, please remove, sir. Uh, please uh, repeat, sir. What is the name? Q, Q rack. I think it is called Q rack. C U R E A C. Okay, okay. Q R E Q rack. Q rack. Okay. Sir. Yeah. And come there to, might be sir. more. You can just Google it. Okay. Right, sir. So we get many cases of head lice also. Yeah. So after washing the hair, we normally apply it for ten minutes and then wash off. For mm -hmm. a minute. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? And reapply after seven days. So it can be left uh, for five to ten minutes and then it can be washed. Even you can use the ivermectin uh, shampoo that is available. A single application is good enough and it, the effect lasts for about a month. So it can be repeated after a month. Okay, sir. And if nothing works and you still find lice on the scalp, you can use the lice comb. <laughs> And you can, I what I was taught in my student days was you can tie a thread to the two strong ends and then pass between each teeth and then tie to the other end. So it 
makes a sort of you can pull out every uh, lice from the hair using that technique. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Deepika, you but, can ask questions, whatever the uh, our delegates uh, have Dr. asked. Dr. Deepika is answering their questions. So. No, but she can ask also you. She can answer also. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. sir uh, someone is asking, please throw some light on the mode of application of permethrin for head lice. So, so we have uh, told you can repeat. Uh, yeah. Uh, permethrin can be, permethrin 1% can be applied topically, like uh, for 15 to 20 minutes. And then we have to wash like with plain water. And then we can also repeat the application after 10 days. So and, the uh, net, uh, they mature into lice in 10 days or 7 days? It is said 7 to 10 days, but 10 days is the right time to reapply. Okay, sir. And the the nets that I am showing Any other here, thing, the, Dr. Dr. The, the operculum, if it is closed, if you can examine, it is a live lice inside. If it is open, then it, there is nothing inside. There is a lid here on top, which is called the operculum. If this is closed, then there is a live uh, uh, baby inside. If it is open, the baby has already matured and moved ahead. Moved, moved ahead. Sir, uh, someone asked about the moisturizers for newborns. Like Cetaphil or something. Like that. See, taking names is not allowed in uh, lectures, but yes, Cetaphil is a good option. And there are mm -hmm. many other similar simple options which are there. Our, uh, our oils are as good as any emollient, but depends upon what a parent can spend on the child. So there are many similar preparations like Cetaphil. Cetaphil has become a OTC now. So every mother knows about Cetaphil. Okay, sir. Because uh, we prefer to use coconut oil rather than... Yeah. The, because many families use mustard oil, but that is a irritant kind of thing. Mustard oil, sir, nowadays is an irritant, but the original mustard oil, which is not uh, genetically modified mustard, is not an irritant. Okay, sir. The genetically modified uh, mustard, which we is now being grown in the fields of uh, most of the states, it has got certain chemicals which are irritants. The original mustard, the uh, so-called native mustard, was never a irritant. Okay, sir. This sir, is very well uh, documented. Desi ghee. Many families tend to use desi ghee. Desi ghee, if pure, it is very good. Even loni, as such, what is called loni in the villages, is good. But only thing is, it can become infected with various organisms if kept open. Okay. And this and habit of putting the finger in the uh, tub containing the cream. So they should always be preferred ones which are available in tubes. Dr. Deepika, any other questions? Sir, uh, one with is asking... Uh, yes, yeah. one is asking that uh, can permethrin uh, be used in uh, children uh, below two months of age overnight? Yeah, it has to be used for eight hours minimum to be effective. You cannot use for two hours and think it will kill the mite. In below two months of age also, sir? Technically, FDA, it is not approved. Okay. So it will be an off-label use. Off it is an off-label use. Yes, and it we is off -label explain use. to the parents. Like we use most of the drugs in children less than two years of age. They are all off-label. Whether it is tacrolimus or it is uh, any antihistamine. I was asking a question about less than six months. What is the antihistamine of choice? They normally try to avoid because... Uh... Because when they have running nose, you people prescribe something for that, no? We simply give saline drops. Mm -hmm. Saline drops. We and try to avoid nowadays, uh, as a rational therapy, do not use any antihistaminics for running nose. Sir, sometimes we I... use some Ayurvedic uh, cup drops. I know, I know. But uh, what about the hydroxyzine? Because Nelson mentions yes. hydroxyzine drops in children less than two at years, less than six months. Atrex, Atrex. Yeah, they say one drop per month age you can get. 
Okay, that that we can that we are sometimes using, sir, using as anti-itching also, anti-parasitic yeah. agent, uh, and but not in uh, URTI. URTI yeah. we sometimes use very low dose of CPM. But as a dermatologist, I was asking about teaching what to use in children less yes, than six months. Yes, less than that, that is atorex only, sir. But we, does the itching uh, sensation or the uh, scratch thing develop before six months or one year? We don't know, sir, but the kids keep on crying. Yeah, but they are irritated. They don't know what to do, so they cry. Yes, that is why. That's what happens. They, they can't eat, they can't scratch themselves, but they keep on crying. And so we yeah. can use the correct and some yeah. topical lotion, sir. Topical lotion. Topical lotion. Yes. <clears throat> but good, sir. Any any more questions, Dr. Deepika? Sir, about no. uh, lice in uh, eyelashes. Yeah. Very good. Lice in eyelashes, the simple treatment is apply, apply petrolatum jelly onto the eyelids. That will asphyxiate the uh, larva growing inside the egg and they will all come off. Or you can do manual removal. Any uh, cream or any ointment that will occlude the eyelid. Even neosporin ointment, if you apply over the eyelashes and occlude it, they can be killed. Wonderful. Should we uh, apply at bedtime? Or do yeah, you at, at bed time. Any time, whenever the child is comfortable. For how long? You it may be needed for three to seven days also. One but you have to treat you you have to treat the source from where the child is getting. Right. Because it is thyrus pubis. It is the uh, crab louse which is causing the eyelash uh, nits. It is never the pediculosis capitis. So there must be some adult in the family who is carrying it. Sir, please stop sharing the presentation. Yeah, sure. So most of the questions are answered. If there are still more questions, we can answer them in the group later, later on. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for a wonderful discussion and presentation, sir. It was very lucid and very simplified version. And uh, I hope most of us will gain uh, in day-to-day -day practice. And thank you, Dr. Deepika, for your help. And uh, thank you all the delegates for joining in. And uh, we'll have the last session on next Sunday. 31st of uh, March. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for joining. Thank Dr. you. Shama, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Sushi.